go. Hey everybody, I'm here today with my son, Nate Swanson, and we're gonna do a Mark V GTI review. Nate? Yes. You ready? Yes. All right, let's tell these guys about this car. What is this, Nate? This is a 2006 Volkswagen Golf GTI. It's the 2.0 turbo. Um, I think some of them, I think they come in the 1.8 turbo. I think the 2006 comes in the 1.8 turbo, but this one, this is the 2.0 turbo. Um, I couldn't compare it to the 1.8. I don't know how different, how much different it drives because I've never driven the 1.8, but that's about all. Um, starting on the outside, I got this car this year. So it was 13 years used and then I got it. So it's 2006, it's 2020. Um, there's rust that really broke out on this top fender. Nothing on the other side. So, I mean, it's it most possibly could start on the other side, but if you take a look over here, you're gonna have rust down here. You're gonna have rust that's growing in three different spots, four different spots, you know, just yep. your bottom right door. Right. Here, there's nothing on this back left. Yeah. Nothing on the back of the car. Nice. I do see some cars that get rust dripping down here. Right. Some golfs. I've seen that a lot, but if uh -huh. you take care of your car, yeah. you know, you probably won't get that there. All right. Um, there's rust on the back, fenders on the back door there, front door here. Huh. Okay. You know, it's all just growing out, but there's no rust. There's no rust up here. So, talking about rust, it's an old car and these Volkswagens, like rabbits and golfs and stuff like that. You always see, you always see them with rust. All right, Nate. What can we look at the engine real quick? Yeah. And uh, why did you select the the Volkswagen GTI name? GTI because I like to have fun. That's what the GTI gives you. You can get a normal Golf and have fun, but the GTI also comes with uh, this is a DSG transmission. Okay. And that lets you um, transition in between shifting gears with your shift knob. It's not a manual. It's not automatic, but you are able to um, put it over into sportmatic mode. Okay. You're able to manually shift gears, or you can use the paddle shifters. GTIs do come with paddle shifters. As so, I'll show you. So was this car stock, Nate, when you got it? Um, this car is absolutely stock. The only thing I've done to it is put rims on it. Um, I've seen this on a couple. I've seen this on a couple Volkswagens. Um, actually, I've seen this on two that I've looked at. This little top piece will come off nothing big, but. Yeah, this is the FSI motor, and then this is the TSI motor. The FSI motor has a timing belt, and some, something about the timing belt is at around 90,000 miles to like yeah. 100,000 miles. You need to get that replaced, which can vary from 700 bucks to 1200 bucks, depending on where you bring it. Okay, so, so what, how many miles did you buy with the car? I bought this car with 102,000 miles on it. And how many do you have on it now? 105,000. Haven't replaced the timing belt yet. Okay. That's going to need to be done very soon here. All right, so you put rims on, and did you do anything to the inside? Yeah, yeah. Um, take a look inside. I did, I did some vinyl wrapping here on all my trim. Yep. I did vinyl wrapping on my door trim. If you, if you look over here, I did it on my electrical box over there on the side there. Nice. Um, yep. This GTI logo on my steering wheel. Something nice about GTIs is they do have this flat bottom steering wheel. Right. Golfs and rabbits are all circular. It just gives you more of a sporty look. Right. Um, my paddle shifters, these are extenders. Not all GTIs come with this big of paddle shifters, but I added those onto there. Okay, How? what kind of time did you put into wrap, I mean, this car with all these accents? Uh, six hours to do all of this, maybe. Okay. I didn't do it all in one day, but total maybe six or seven or eight hours, somewhere around there. Where did you get the wrapping effects? Oh, I just, Amazon, 3D um 3d shine finish carbon fiber red wrap and it's how like, much was that it's like 30 bucks to get a nice roll yep and i probably used half that roll okay i mean i'm gonna do more stuff to it but i mean yeah that's just wrapping that's just that's just and like stuff. don't you like get together with a buddy and you guys do it together in your downtime yep okay all right so let's talk about the engine the transmission and what it's like to drive this car in fact let's jump in and take it for a drive So, one thing about these automatics that I have, I have a little bit of a, I have some beef with these cars. Um, you put it into drive, and this is where you have your Sportmatic transmission, your DSG. This this DSG um, transmission is actually very fast, clean, and smooth. 
but when you want to shift manually you go up and down right just like you've seen in most cars have trans transmissions that let you go from automatic to somehow manually being able to change gears but you have a sport mode here um if you want to switch gears with this you can't use sport mode right because you're you're in drive right now and you can't go down because that's how you're going to change gears you know you're going to upshift downshift whatever but if you want to be in sport mode you can't use this to change gears. You have to use your paddle shifters to change gears. So you can be in sport mode and change gears manually, but that's only with your paddle shifters. Okay. All right, so how often do you, I mean, how do you, what drive mode do you normally use? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in drive, driving everywhere, but you know, if I, if I wanna get, get quick with it, right? You need to pass someone, I don't know. You can, I usually don't need to pop it into sport mode. Usually all I need to do is downshift the gear and then hit it, you know? But right. There's really, there's really no reason. You don't need to use sport mode in this car because drive gives you way more horsepower. I mean, it's not like you're getting more horsepower in sport mode. You know, sport mode, all that's doing is just giving you a higher RPM reading and letting your your car get bigger torque and accelerate quicker. But let's talk about that. I mean, how how fast do you get up to speed in this GTI? I mean, this is a like a 14 year old car now. Or, um... And uh, how do you, I mean, what do you, you've driven a lot of cars. How do you, what do you uh, gauge this thing at? So there's a, there's a problem with this car. Um, you get to speed too fast and you don't realize it. That's the problem. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So you, you get on, you get on the freeway, not on the freeway, you get, you get on the road, right? And you're already going 30 or 40. And let's say you, you put your foot down, you apply minimum to little pressure. Now you're going 73 miles an hour and you don't know it. Got so it. The, the thing I like about this acceleration is this pedal is actually, what happens is it starts at the base. Okay. It starts at the base of the car. So it's actually at the bottom. So now when you accelerate, you're, you're, gonna, you're pushing from the top and it gives you a really easy and smooth acceleration. When some pedals are, are not like that, they're not the same. So I've driven some cars where your acceleration is a little, it's not as, it's a little harder to press. This one's super responsive. The little bit of tapping that you do makes your car go. Um, talking about the turbo in this car, it's a really small turbo. Not really small, but it it kicks in, right? You're gonna you're gonna go halfway down and it's gonna kick in once and then it's gonna kick in twice. So it kind of gives you a one thrust, two thrust, and it works most efficiently in second and third, right? I mean Right. First gear, first gear, yep. you're in first gear for like a second and a half, you know, then you're shifting because you get up there so quickly. Um, okay. So, uh, so you, are you saying you can get into trouble in this car really quick because yes. it, okay. Yes. And you've learned that the easy way, the hard way? I've learned that the easy and hard way. Okay. So, uh, what do you recommend for all those guys that are, uh, they're gonna get their license soon and they've heard about the GTI and they want to get it Is it a good first car or what would you recommend? It's a fantastic first car, but get this car in manual uh, Do not get this car in an automatic Well, okay, so why is that? Okay, the automatic the automatically automatic gives you easy access To speed right? Yes it gives you easy, the, the turbo is it's going it's shifting gears for you it's it's so it's so smooth you don't realize you're shifting gears sometimes when you're hitting when you're hitting that acceleration pedal right yeah yeah it, it shifts gears like butter it's right. a 14 year old car but the transmission's absolutely it's butter. like glass isn't yeah, it yeah, yeah I can attest to that I've driven this car sometimes I'll go and get groceries with this car uh, and I'll just grab Nate's key and I'll say Nate I'm taking your car because it's such a phenomenal transmission it's just like glass to drive and when uh, when we got this car, we did research on it, and uh, we found out that it was a one-owner car. It had been given to a dealer, and the dealer had it for 2,000 miles. And um, we called the dealer where all the work, service work was done, and we learned that it had been a one-owner car, and he took it there regularly for oil changes and all the maintenance. So it was the ideal, almost a dream car. Uh, and there was a rarity around that. We just, Nate and I just got, we kind of got lucky, right? Yeah. The Lord blessed us with this car. And um, it's been a gas to drive ever since. And with the accents that Nate did, it makes it even more uh, pleasurable. But so are you are you gonna dump this thing and get a manual or are you gonna keep this? What's the plan? I'm gonna keep this until I have enough money to eat a manual. That's about it. Oh, you're that hungry for a manual? Yeah, 
I mean, I, I love this car. Get an automatic if you want. I recommend it, right? I think it's no other automatic drives like this, in my opinion. You know, just okay. The, the Audi and the Volkswagen, right? Because this is a German car. Audi makes the same engine as well, so you're you're gonna get the same experience in let's say an Audi. You know, the Audi A4s have this 2.0 turbo, and they actually have the same FSI engine in it too. So you can get this in an in an Audi, but. There's nothing like a GTI. Right, so, I mean, isn't that just because you're getting such a shorter wheelbase and it's so much quicker in the corners and all the rest of that happiness? Oh, yeah, you, you sport tune suspension. I mean, with, with the GTIs, I mean, showing my car's 14 years old, right, I do feel a lot of bumps in the road. It, okay. It is not, it is not, it is not driving. Yep, I'm feeling them right now, I hear you. You're not driving a, a Rolls Royce, yep. all right, where you're soaking up all potholes. Okay, so, uh... Okay, so are you, how, how easy it is it to get a GTI and Can you just go and jump on Craigslist and then have one that evening? Yep, it takes about eight months to find the, the GTI you want. Ouch. Maybe three years. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your shopping experience. I mean, was it that grueling? Okay, so, I mean, what happened is I, I've wanted a GTI for a while, but I found a Mazda 3. I went and bought that, and I had to sell that car because I was having issues with it anyway. Sold that car and I was sitting in my kitchen that evening and I was looking on Facebook Marketplace and some guy was holding on to this car and he was a small time dealer. He didn't know the value of this and he had it underpriced. And that, there wasn't much description, but he had it underpriced. It had some crappy rims on them, really scuffed up. There was already rust growing. Anyway, I'm gonna have to fix some of the rust and we'll do, but I don't think he knew what he was holding. So that day we went and I purchased it. Um, so that was, it was really lucky. But I mean, I've been looking at pe people, the resale on these vehicles, if you're gonna look to buy one of these, the resale on these are insane. You can get a 2012 with 60,000 miles on it and it will be 14 and a half grand, you know? Ouch. So. So you just gotta like watch, bide your time, mm -hmm. hoard your cash and then pounce when the market's ready. Yeah, you have to have cash in hand and then you can look on the market. If you, if you, want, if you want to buy a used GTI, uh, this is the Mark V. The Mark V is 2006 to 2009. This this body style is I like this body style, but my favorite is the Mark VI body style. That's the one that I go for the Mark VI manual, right? But I, I do love the two door Mark V. The doors are massive. There's a lot of room. It's a coupe. Um, it's a lot a lot of room. You lay down the back seats. You have you can fit anything in here. But if I'm gonna recommend, if you want to buy a car, a used Volkswagen Golf GTI, the Mark VI, 2010, 2011, anything in that range, around 80,000 miles on it, that's gonna be your best deal. Because you're, you're gonna get it for probably the cheapest that those Mark VI's go. Awesome. So, um, so you plan on having this car until you upgrade to a Mark VI manual. That's your hunt right now yeah. then, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna hoard cash. And, and they're, they're not there. And if they are there, if that car is out there right now that I've seen, it's expensive. Right. All right, Nate, thanks a lot for the review. Any last tips you'd give to the young buyer? Well, what was I thinking of? I'm gonna, talking about the interior again, these seats. If you're wondering how comfortable this car is, car is out of all the cars I've sat in, I mean, my dad has a 2019, 2017 Honda Civic, right? Those, you know, modern day technology seats and comfort, but this outgoes the Honda Civic seats. Our Kia seats, we have a Kia Sorento. The, these seats are leather, they're comfortable. Um, they have the driver's side, you can adjust actually the bolster in the back, but yeah, these seats, I mean, the, the thing about the GTI is they have these little arm cuff things that kind of sit you in there almost like race seats. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a sporty look, but they're super, super comfortable. Um, and then with these, this is the, you know, it's not that convenient to get into a, a coupe, but, but you know, it works, right? So much room in the back. Um, yeah, I mean, something I'd have to say is if you're gonna get the Mark V, if you're looking into the Mark V, you can get you can get the base model right and that's not going to have any of this interior that's not going to have any of these screens right here for your control the camera you're not going to have you're not going to have this screen with your temperature and stuff like that 
and with these mark with these mark fives you can actually change the channels inside your temperature you can control stuff like here right now if you're gonna look at stuff like this this is my rpms right i'm at eight eight rpms right or eight thousand rpms you know you can change stuff to your miles per hour this is actually going to show my miles per hour so here i'll show you real-time rpms i'm at eight thousand That's your RPMs, and it actually digitally shows you. That's only on the top trim for this GTI. Nice. You can get the normal ones that just have these little hot, cold, you know, vents in the front, vents in the back. It's really simple. You have no lights. You have no controls over this. You do get seat warmers in these 2006 nice. Volkswagen GTIs. That is nice. That is the top trim. It does come with a sunroof. Um, that doesn't come. <laughs> that is nice. Yep. So. You get you get everything in this 2006 GTI that you get in a 2015 Nissan. Everything. Huh. Know. Beautiful. All right, Nate. Thanks so much for the review. Yep. Signing off, guys. Good luck with your GTI hunt and enjoy your Volkswagen.